Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look at these potential bad boys right here. This, my friends, is the Adidas Ultra Boost 21. This is dope box right here, I gotta say. This is something that we've been talking about here on the channel for quite a while. Put some tech specs on there, make everybody happy. It teaches everybody what they just bought. And awesome. These are available currently on the Adidas app. They are available for members, I believe. So we're a member because anybody can be. So a lot of new changes have been made to this model right here. However, they do remind me a little bit, especially in the toe box of the original Ultra Boost. It was not called the Ultra Boost though. It was called, well, it was the Ultra Boost, but it also reminds me of the Energy Boost. So the toe box area reminds me a little bit of both of those with the design that they implemented in there and everything. And I think they look pretty cool. It's not a shoe that actually looks good on the internet. You know what I mean? Like it looks so weird with the bulbous butt but once you get them in and you get them on feet it's like hmm, not that bad now again like I was saying there's a lot of changes between the last model and this one and the first one that we're going to talk about is the boost obviously the boost midsole has finally changed like they definitely changed it they've tweaked it here and there but this one has changed it's a different design altogether and they say that these guys right here have six percent more boost than the last model which was the 20 version and the 20s had how much more boost than the last they didn't say exactly but with the 19 that they had bumped it up by 20 percent so if the 19 and the 20 have 20% more plus six on these guys right here than the last versions, that's 26% more boost than the original. But does it feel boosty? Unfortunately, it doesn't. A lot of people are saying that this is like hella comfortable and stuff like that, and they're not uncomfortable. It's just that they're really stiff, and I'm very surprised. The Ultra Boost and the Boost stuff, man, has been money all the way through. And this one, when I put them on, I was like, I can't feel anything, nothing, not even a little bit. So I thought that it was the shoes that I was wearing before. I was like, maybe they're more comfortable than these guys, and so the morning did it again and I put these on after wearing some Jordan 3s which are definitely not boost and I still felt the same thing so I'm a little disappointed in that so I think when you pack more boost pellets in here while it might be great for longevity purposes it also doesn't give you that squishy absorption and deflection feeling that the original boost used to give you now the outsole is pretty interesting it's also re-engineered so we got something a little bit different here we do have continental rubber back which is awesome this guy right here is uh, very close to the original stretch web outsole this guy is still stretch web but different so again, new model, new me. Now, despite what some people think, Continental Rubber is not used on these for durability purposes. It's actually for grip on like wet pavements and stuff like that because Continental Rubber is tire rubber. Typically will hold up really well in all weather conditions. So that's why they use Continental on these guys is for those of you guys that run in all kinds of weather and stuff. So I think that's dope. Now, one of the more notable changes between these and the last like entire run from the get-go is that the torsion system is gone. What they put in its place is super cool and hopefully you're able to see it but it's this right here like it's a u-shape and then it dips down just a little bit ends right about there so hopefully you guys can see that and it's adidas's lep technology and that stands for linear energy push which was what the whole purpose of the beginning was for because these like those weird like insoles and stuff that they market online when you push down on these guys right here like they spring back man it's pretty dope so the purpose behind this lep plate right here is for not just torsional support and rigidity which these actually do have but it's also for a linear push so kind of like the four percent where it makes you faster and this that and the other and propels you forward this is adidas's version of that and it actually kind of works so the upper itself is prime knit plus however it's not just prime knit it's also prime blue and what that means is that the upper itself was made with parlay and they took plastic out of the ocean turned it into a knit and here we go it's not completely like recycled i think it's up to 50 percent, but it's still better than nothing you know what i mean and also i believe that is exactly why you can see these things heat pressed into there because there's a little bit of plastic in these but you can't feel it because it is a soft knit and everything but it's just enough to where when you do heat press a design into it it stays there which is pretty dope and the knit itself is still really nice you got lots of stretch in the tongue uh, lots of stretch and breathability in the forefoot all of that perforation there uh, very easy to get on you just open her up slide in and you're good to go that's what she said now as far as sizing is concerned i went true to size i was skeptical as of you know adidas i will say that i am fairly satisfied with the sizing it's not super snug or one-to-one -one or anything so if i was going to run in these which which I am not, but if I was, this would be the size that I'd go for. It allows for enough foot splaying without being constricting uh, along the upper, which is really painful when you're running, let me tell you. However, some people do like that snug one-to-one -one fit, so if you do like that, and this is possibly going to be a casual shoe for you, down half a size might be the way to go, unless you're a wide footer. Again, go true to size, you should be fine. However, I will let you know that right here, just like the original Ultra Boost and the Energy Boost, there's a little, uh, feels like a little bit of a plastic, like a little piece, you know what I mean? So that part like really like, messes with your toe like your big toe your toenails and all that so if you want to keep your toenails you might want to just go true to size but i'm just letting you know just in case 
Now, in addition to the LEP plate, there's an additional support feature, which is something that we've all come to know and love from the Adidas Ultra Boost, and that is the external cage as well as the external heel counter. This guy right here doesn't reach all the way down to the midfoot this time. It's just sewn on there, so it's a little bit less plastic use, which is good. And then the heel counter is uh, very similar to the past models. It's just a little slimmer. So these you love. I love. You love all the Ultra Boosts yeah. almost. Yeah. yeah. So are you excited for this one as a runner? I am. And is there anything just based off of what you've heard that you're excited or not excited for, or you just you just want to try it yourself? I just want to try it myself. I am. I am excited that you got a pair to try, just like to try on. Mm -hmm. because oh, for sizing. I can't remember if it was with the 19s, but these ones I had to go with my regular casual size. casual size because they fit so long. Yeah. And that was frustrating when we went to go pick them up. Yeah, I think I had a pair of these too. No, you had the 19s. Oh, was it? The 19s, I remember the same thing where like, I also love the Ultra Boost. I like wearing them casually. I don't love running in them. When I put on the 19, like I was like, yo, like this feels like almost like a size 10. Mm. You know what I mean? It felt so big where I was just like this. And I tried wearing them one time for like one of our like hikes and stuff. And I just, the forefoot, man, I was like all over the place. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you take one wrong step and you're gonna roll your ankles. So these ones feel a little bit better. Like I said, like if I was gonna run in these, this is kind of that forefoot fit that I would want for the splaying and everything. Cause that was one of the more jarring things that I wasn't aware of when we started running together oh, is yeah. like, I love like a snug fit casually and performance for basketball, but for running, like I was like, holy shit because I wore the same style to run in and like 10, 20 minutes, like as soon as you start just pounding. That's what she said. Your foot starts expanding and swelling a little bit. And I was like, dude, this is mad uncomfortable. You're not the first person. I remember way back when having that realization too, because I was running in whatever I had available mm -hmm. and what feels fine walking around definitely does not feel fine. Once you're on the road. Yeah. It's so weird. But yeah, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh crap. All of my running shoes fit like this. Mm -hmm. And so trying to find one that didn't was difficult. Yeah. He looked like those montages and movies where you just see the clothes flying, <laughs> but it was shoes. <laughs> I was trying on everything, man. I was trying on everything. I was like, I got to find something that's a little bit wider. And but that was like right in the peak of one of the shutdowns during COVID. Mm -hmm. And so you couldn't even like yeah, walk into- Yeah, we couldn't into... go in to try on anything. Yeah. So I really was reliant on either something that I had or on online reviews, which can be frustrating because sometimes they're not super reliable. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to know your thoughts in these running wise because uh, again I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed with how much boost that they Crammed boast in there yeah that they boast about and I'm just like bro I can't feel nothing there is such a thing as too much no I know especially when we're talking about stuff like this where it starts off as little pellets the more that you put in that mold tray and expand it the less it expands which means the less fluff or bounce that you get from it you know what I mean and then it just ends up becoming dense and that's what these feel like the, like the forefoot in the basketball world we call it court feel hella court feel in these like this would be one of them like Steph Curry would, would look like this shoe you're making me nervous I, that's the thing like I'm just hoping that you like them in motion there was an Adidas model a bunch of us at where testers got sent them. was it the light strike one no it wasn't the no. light strike it was but drew myself I'll find it and put up the card here but they were boasting about the way that they had implemented the boost in there oh. and all of us were like this is not a great way to do this it felt like you had card board underneath your yeah. foot. It was the exact opposite of what it you associate sometimes. with boost. It happens sometimes. Yeah, it is, you know, boost is not always mm -hmm. much like foam, like regular foam EVA. Yeah. It's not always the same. It really depends on implementation. I say this all the time when, when we're discussing weight, where a lot of people put emphasis on weight, but weight is not as important as implementation. I've had sh that is super lightweight, feel like a brick because everything's clunky and it's implemented weird. All the weight's not distributed evenly, all that stuff. But then I've had stuff that is a little bit heavier and feels smooth as sh it's not about weight it's about the implementation and construction of things but anyways that takes care of it for the ultra boost 2021 hopefully you guys learned something about the shoe hopefully you enjoyed the video let us know what you think about these down below in the comment section are you excited for them are you not did you already get a pair like if you're on that member access thing i don't know why they didn't come in smaller sizes it was only men's like there wasn't even a women's option at least for me so maybe i missed it i hope i didn't <laughs> I hope I didn't because I did not go into the men's section. I literally searched Ultra Boost 21 and this was the only one that came up. Okay. I mean, it, it showed what was coming soon, but this was the only one that was available and yeah. 
I took his word for it. I don't know. No, now, now, <laughs> I'm, now I'm second guessing. I'm like, man, did I mess up? So yeah. But let us know what you think about these down below in the comment section, especially if you started running them already. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. Even if it's just casual, like if you feel like me where you put these on, you're like, where is the boost? I'm really curious because I hope I'm not the only one. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, guys, have a good one.